there's a question right over here as well. Were you a medicine man in your tribe before you joined the Wild West show? And if so, what did that involve? Uh, yes, I was on my path at, um, like I said, age five. And I had done the horse dance as a youngster, which endowed me with certain privileges and power. Um, I needed another ceremony so that I could actually begin to practice as a medicine person. When I left to do the uh, Wild West show, um, I was already practicing as a medicine person. Uh, and I actually uh, thought that that was going to further my education on how to deal with the Wasikis. We have another question here. I, yeah, over here, sorry. I know that at about that time there were a lot of Indian schools out in the uh, areas of the Yankton, Sioux, and, and uh, Lakota, Nakota, Dakota. And so I was wondering if, how you managed to not get taken to the, the Indian schools or if any of your children were taken to those schools. Uh, the Indian schools actually happened uh, after 1934. Um, we were in uh, many treaties, and as they placed us into these uh, little islands, they would draw circles around us and place us on a parcel of land so that we could not uh, do as we did before, which was be free. And they made islands for themselves, the Wasiki, so everything was on an island. The uh, four-legged were on islands, the two-legged were on islands, and Part of those islands were not only the missionaries coming to uh, indoctrinate us, but um, the writing of those treaties. It was in the treaty laws, uh, of the treaty agreements, that certain things uh, were brought to uh, our reservations, like education. But most of that did not happen till about 1934 with the Indian Reorganization Act. Um, in 1934, I was already up in age, and I didn't know about continuing education. <laughs> I think we have time for maybe one more question. Okay, here's one two. question here. Uh -huh. um, my question is, um, when you were growing up and became a young man or whatever, and the Trail of Tears, the Cherokees, the Creek, the Seminoles were all then that were captured was being sent out to Oklahoma. Did that affect your people as well? Were you aware of that? And how did you feel about that? Uh, we were, at that time, um, unaware that that had happened to our uh, Shalagi brothers in the East. Um, we had visions that told us that the Wasichis were coming. We also had visitors that had come from the East and had told us of the uh, interest in Western expansion. So uh, by the 1880s, we were a little leery of Wasichis, but uh, the Trail of Tears actually happens uh, a good 40 to 50 years before what happened to us. Um, and so we did not take part in that and really did not know much of that till after the um, development of the ghost dance. Uh, the ghost dance and of course the sun dance uh, created a, a brand new energy for uh, native people throughout uh, the um, the Dakota, Lakota area, Wyoming, and some of those people had traveled down into Oklahoma to share uh, the ghost dance with Oklahoma people. So they were people that uh, were taking out those messages. And so there was a sort of a, a, a semblance of a Native American telegraph at that point where we would hear those stories. But when the Trail of Tears happened in uh, 1927, to 1938, we 
were still very much, um, and of course that's before I was born, but we were very much living our um, ancient ways and traditional lifestyle. You mean 1827? Yeah, 1827. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18. 18, 18. What did I say? You said 1927. <laughs> 18, 1827. <laughs> 18. No, that was uh, what you call a, I don't know, one of those slips. 